So this is Nick here at Only Fabs, and today I got a really cool interview with Jokey Jake. Um, I'm really excited about this. Why? Because I'm playing his version of Chain, and I got my first 3-0 win with it. Um, before the 3-0 win, I asked him to do uh, uh, an interview with me for my YouTube channel, to which he obliged. So I'm really thankful for you being here. Thank you. I'm I'm glad to be here. Anything to help the community. Yeah, yeah. So um, uh, we had a, a short uh, a chat. Well, not actually short. We were in an hour-long chat <laughs> about the game <laughs> and uh, about uh, about life. So I wrote a couple of pointers in. Uh, so Joke Jake, I, I didn't even ask you where the where the name comes. From. Where's your uh, your handle uh, coming from? Um, I've honestly had that since I was like twelve years old, and I I just always been the type class clown type making people laugh and then my name is jacob so it just kind of came together as joker jake and then seven is my favorite number so pretty simple <laughs> <laughs> well what's also pretty simple is that you've been playing two-thirds of your life uh card games right yeah yeah pokemon on the playground always the kid i was trying to actually play by the rules while everyone else just wanted to slam their charge cards into the dirt um and then i was playing Yu Gi Oh after that and then so many other card games since then i've just always enjoyed the strategy aspect of card games and yeah. flesh and blood has really hit the spot let me tell you yeah because it's i think it's been uh the same for uh, tons of people that uh when COVID hit there was a, a scratch or an itch to be scratched and for yeah. whatever reason, yeah, it was a pretty perfect storm for Flash and Bot, but the community mm -hmm. is, is really engaging. I mean, you talked about how many webcam games you played before you could actually. Yeah, I mean, I had no one I could play with locally, um, two hours away minimum from anyone that um, played. And so I was just jamming games on Tabletop Simulator and in webcam. Um, just trying to get a hold of the strategy of the game because it's simple on the outside, complex on the inside. Like all the intricacies of playing the hero the right way and what to run and all that stuff just comes through experience. So even though I've only really been playing about three months, I've played almost every day since the day I started. Yeah, and if this, but this you can say for tons of games, but this game really is uh, easy to learn but hard to master, right? Absolutely. Yeah, and actually we wrote uh, we wrote this one down as well that you uh, as a game designer I cried at the beauty of how well it was designed as a it's it's insane like I've done a little bit of game design you know even had a successful Kickstarter on a game and I've been trying to design a TCG for myself that kind of inflicted onto the world what I like about TCGs and mm -hmm. Fab kind of filled that void and so I even put a pause on my project because it's things like when you pitch your blues as resources and, and then at the end of the game, that's when you start drawing into them and you have to use them to attack and things. It, it just depicts that your character is like tired, you know, because their attacks are weaker. They've been battling it out for who knows how long. And it's just things like that is just so beautiful of a design. Yeah. It, uh, it, uh, it just fits, right? It's just you start at your strongest and then you riddle down during a fight. And actually my first couple of games, I uh i felt the story you know i was uh, yeah. as a game as a game designer if you have designed games i can understand that you would say uh, i cry every time <laughs> cry every time it's just so well made yeah and then uh with regarding to uh the randomness as, as part of the game that you need to this was when we started talking about how you need to test or actually get a, yeah. a solid deck going how do you identify that uh, a loss is, uh, is is just RNG? Well, I mean, that's the thing aspect is playing TCGs as long as I have and as long as some people have, you just come to realize that when you have a deck that you shuffle and draw from, it's always going to have a certain amount of randomness. The best you can do is minimize the randomness by the way you play and the way you build your deck. And Fab is no different. Um, if, if anything, it has less randomness than other games because eventually if you don't have a shuffle effect, you know exactly what's coming in the late game. Yeah. And so you can minimize that randomness as well. But okay. even then it's just, um, the, I mean, besides brute, obviously who in just fully jumps into the randomness, especially with scab skin and things like that. Um, you just have to realize that sometimes no matter what you did was correct. 
they could still won out because of the order of things that came out. Like yeah. that's just how it is. Especially if you guys are playing chain, like you have to realize that it does add another bit of randomness to the game when you're yeah. randomly banishing things off the top. Yeah, you and you're see not running. Start. Yeah, you're that's not running a hundred percent blood debt because it's not feasible. And so you have to realize that sometimes it's good not to banish blood debt cards because then you don't have to be forced to play them and you're not taking blood debt damage and all that. So it's finding that balance, you know, and realizing that sometimes it's not you and that's okay. Yeah. Actually, it's funny that you say it. It just reminded me, uh, sometimes I was uh, beating myself for a loss, even though I was, I know hands just lined up because if you have this all blue hand, in a turn that he takes an off off turn so the the pressure is completely gone that you just put yep. on him by drawing four blues or four reds yeah that happens but uh it's... yeah i mean tempo is such an important part of the high end of this game and you won't have control over the tempo sometimes no. i mean me being a miss a viscerai main before chain came out you you forcibly lose the tempo all the time because you're somewhat of a setup deck so you're basically wanting to attack every two turns. So for every turn that you hit them so hard that they lose all their armor in their hand, then you take a turn where you're just making rune chance. So your tempo game is so different from like an aggro deck or an ira deck where you're just all about blocking efficiently and smashing their face in. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I was just silent because this was the first time that I realized what bothered me with uh, Fisherai, why I, I, I just couldn't get it to work and, and then just left it because I was trying to do a Dorinthia or Ira style deck with going wide, Fisrai, which just isn't in the deck. You need to prepare for setting up and take some damage. Yeah, yeah and actually that's that's funny with, with all the expensive parts. It's uh, maybe that's more for another video, but I uh, I found it uh, some some good words of wisdom from from experienced TCG players. And you can top eight with uh, you can top nine with comments, but you can't win it. <laughs> No, I mean, yeah, it, Fab is such a well-designed game that you can play budget decks and do pretty well. But as soon as you get into the top contenders between how well they know their decks and how well they are, how good they are at the game, you have to have the high-quality card content in order to put up a fight. Yeah, and, uh, and let's not forget, uh, a top 8 at the 46-player tournament is still the top 10%. So don't beat yourself up for being 90%. Exactly. It it just means that you're eventually you're gonna get there, man. Because as as well as I might have done last weekend, it took me a long time to come. You know, I wasn't always making top eight. I wasn't always even getting close to top eight. Where yeah. we all just have to jam those games. Yeah, yeah. All you did was make a smooth deck. So you need a good deck. And how you <laughs> yeah. do you make a good deck? You test it. Test it over and over. I know that whole spiel about practice makes perfect is annoying to hear, but in Fab specifically, you'll only get to know the intricacies of the deck by playing it and picking what cards fits your play style, which don't. Because, for instance, like a card could be really good, but if it doesn't fit your play style, you might as well take it out because you're not going to want to play it or you're going to end up pitching it or things like that, and it's not going to fit to what you want to do. Like one of the main things, um, advice I give to people when they ask about what to add to their deck, why I chose this, is player preference. Player preference is a huge deal when um, getting the nuances in your deck. Specifically, like if some people like to run Consuming Volition and some people like to run Meet and Greet, because Consuming Volition is a scary on hit effect comparatively to Meet and Greet, but Meet and Greet's more consistent. So it's just about what you like to do in your deck. I couldn't have said it better myself. That was, uh, that was, that's, that's, uh, drives that point home. It's, and that's actually what I love about, uh, uh, about your comments in the, in the discord, that it's always uh, something along the lines of, well, um, if you like it, play it. Uh, and from testing, I've found that it's sometimes really hard to, uh, get it going or, um, I love the, the go again from the meet and greet versus fire volition. And because you actually explain it in one sentence, it's, it's short and it's easily perceivable information. That's so much better than, and I'm not going to do any name calling, but there are some, <laughs> no, there are some communities, uh, even within flesh and blood. And they say, no, you shouldn't play that. Uh, oh, oh, that's, that's such a bad option. And I'm like, explain it. 
get right. So like, it's okay to have strong opinions, but the biggest part about it is to be able to just realize why you feel that way and explain that to people. Cause some people don't feel that way about that card. Cause when you produce a deck list and show it to people, you're not trying to tell them to play that exact deck list. You're giving them a backbone for them to make the changes they liked to make to it. For instance, like a guy could be obsessed with um, Vexing Malice. So he's going to run the Rainbow Vexing Malice because Arcane Damage is amazing in, in both Room Blade, and there's nothing you could tell him that would change his mind. So the backbone you give, <laughs> so the backbone you give him is something that he can then work around, and yeah. that's that's what I like to do with deck building is make a consistent backbone. All right, that's that's cool. Maybe we need to change some order of these cards, but uh, ah, the presentation has been made, so. Uh... <laughs> um, with regarding to testing, uh, yeah, you gave a really nice roundup. I'll, I'll try to summarize it, and you can correct me if I'm. You said you, you grab a design aspect, so that's something that you think, okay, this is what my deck wants to do. You grab FabDB from the amazing guys from FabDB. Uh, yep. You watch your ratios. You have a, a fair ID because of you've done many deck building strategies. On what should be red? What should be blue? And what should be yellow? Then you go to TTS and you spam it. Yep. Just play it over and over and over, even if it's just against yourself. Okay. Well, if, if, now maybe I should do that. And reps get you to the true finish line, right? That's where you mm -hmm. finally identify what score, what can be changed out. And uh... yeah. So actually, now going to uh, some of the cards which he, we want to discuss. I don't know if we already have this in recording or it's just but uh command and conquer <laughs> command and conquer so it's a card for me that is just good in every deck um unfortunately <laughs> and i say that because it's i don't like um cards that are just always good and no matter what you put them in um i like the intricacies of people's class cards and being able to to work around that rather than just something that's always good but um i realized um that my nativity was um, when I started making top eights and playing against really competitive, strong players that it's just needed against certain matchups. Like for instance, Ira is a tough matchup against go wide strategies because flick flack is so strong. Yeah. And then Bravo is just like staunch response and immovable aren't as efficient on chain, but they're still really good things that sometimes that's all they want to block with. And so if you just start the turn, with a CNC with go again, because you're running shadow puppetry and art of war that can give them go again. Um, it just turns off their turn and yeah. then you just get to do so much damage afterwards that it's just, you got, you have to run it if you want to be super competitive. And it's the, the fun, nah, the fun part, but I think you look as a, as a younger player, as a, as a more unexperienced player, you get this, this on hit, destroy all cards in their arsenal. There's also uh, maybe some some spoilers for for future sets, but uh, right, yeah. Right? But the actual strong part is the defense reactions can be played to the chain link. That's I've I've played Iron Mirage, and then you uh, get the command to conquer slapped around you, and then you're looking at your hand, and there are like three flick flags, and you're like, oh, I'm gonna get this guy, you know, and, and then so actually, yeah, it wins games outright just yeah. by itself. It's pretty nuts. And and this is this is one of those things you can you're gonna lose to yourself more often if you're an inexperienced player, and then when you finally actually get there and you get consistently uh, better at the game, then you need these cards, right? Right. Which also is uh, the most important card now for for actually making chain work, in my opinion. And you don't see it on the it's an equipment card, do I guess? Hmm. Is it Carrion Husk? Oh wow! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the the yeah. Carrion Husk. Wow. It's 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 game changing. I mean, I know I it's people have heard one, that it might not be that great, but if we're talking about the Blitz format specifically, it's six plus life. I mm -hmm. mean, because the games go by so fast, especially because you're an aggro deck. Um, that you're basically being able to block some big attack that's either dominated or on hit, and you're able to basically keep your whole hand and have a free turn. 
and the amount of blood debt you take from it is usually not even matter. Even if you take the full six blood debt damage by the end of the game, it just meant that you didn't have to take it all at once, which is super important. Um, the only thing is, is you have one. to be super careful that people don't just attack reaction buff their first attack and get you down to 13, because then you have a wasted equipment slot. <laughs> Never happened to me. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, mean, I... it happened to me on a shunt, so, oh. I mean... <laughs> yeah, I, uh, I, uh, it was the first turn, he attacked me with, um, uh, four attack, was the mirror, four attack spell, and I was like, uh, sure. Uh, expecting full and well that I had to carry in host the next attack, and he said, "Then I razor it," and I was like, "Then I'm gonna put my carry in in the grave or in the in the banish zone." Be before yeah. I even could finish my sentence, he was like, "Yeah," and the carry in host dies. <laughs> so was, Dude, they get so excited. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, you have you have a plan in your head, and when it works in a game, it's um, it's the best feeling, right? Yep, and I play super greedy, so it's happened to me several times already. <laughs> yeah, well, <coughs> I um, chain rewards playing greedy. I think. Oh yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm a greedy player. <laughs> now I'm a greedy player, and I I, I really feel the chain. So I. <laughs> I mean, when you, when turn one, uh, or I should say turn two, Dorinthia comes in with for six on her weapon attack, and you're like, yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> go to 14 you're like that's when you know you're probably too greedy because they can pump it with like so anything in their deck <laughs> yeah but uh yeah 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 probably you probably should shoot uh uh carry and host the first six attack from uh from the drink yeah but <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> it, sometimes just blocking from your hand if they start and then they uh and then you attack some because you redraw them and then they attack you and you're just like okay just three i'm oh, sure man <laughs> Best feeling. Another card that's now on my on my screen is Shadow of Urser, and I picked this card specifically a because it's majestic, but also because this one is what no what I noticed was uh, giving added consistency to the fact that you could banish a card from your hand and then play it from banish. Yeah, it's definitely one of the strongest class cards in the entire deck, just because it fulfills so many different roles of being a blue pitch that in the early game you can pitch it to then get it banished in the late game and it's really useful for banish as well um it's a way to uh, make your chain bigger because you're able to give it go again um innately yeah and also it lets you um get stuff from your hand into the banish zone so in that sense you're not really losing the card because you're going to just play it that turn anyway yeah. um and for specifically for bounding demagon it actually gives it a plus one attack when it's played from banish zone so it's actually better to be able to play it from the banner zone than from your hand. So it just kind of just does everything you want it, honestly. Yeah, no, I, I'm never uh, bumped when I see a uh, Shadow of Ursa, even though it's uh, just a two attack. Uh, buffing it with Seeds of Agony is uh, also annoying because then mm -hmm. it's uh, uh, one arcane damage, two, uh, two attack, which actually blocks for three and and and, and blocks uh, and, and pitches for three, so it's uh... absolutely, and it's one of those zero cost attacks that can be used with your blue seeds of agony. Yeah, and then actually, it's also just annoying in general. Um, with this one, um, the demagon that also costs zero, and if you have two of those. It's like Shadow of Urser, uh, banish the Demagon, play the Demagon, and then uh, play another Demagon. Or do you need a yep. non-attack maybe for it? But yep, and you don't even you don't even have to spend a single resource that turn. Exactly, it's all all free of charge. So it's just you don't have to pitch to go free white, and with the chain ability you can actually go uh, give it all go again. So uh, and talking about not spending resources and giving go again, <laughs> Shadow Puppetry. And the first time yeah. I, I shadow puppetry at uh, Command the Conqueror's guy was like, Hey, is it any attack? Yeah, man, it's any attack. <laughs> it's not class. It's not room blade. It's not shadow. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, it, it's it's great that only Levia and um, Chain has access to it because otherwise it would be disgusting for everyone. <laughs> but um, just the fact that you can do it on Enlightened Strike for seven or an eight with with shadow puppetry 
or you can do it for six with go again or with command and conquer for seven is the magic number as we all know from ira yeah, yeah. um it's just so strong to start your turn with like there's so many possibilities that it opens up and all of the effects it gives are relevant plus one attack relevant go again extremely relevant on hit look at the top card possibly banish it and nine out of ten times it's relevant yeah yeah I, I, I know and I haven't even added it to to the to the list of cards because art of war is also another card that has only relevant abilities for for chain actually I yeah. should have added in here because I have also a question for you uh, how often do you plus one draw cards and how often do you go again draw cards so I usually almost always go again draw cards. The times that I do plus one is when I have those um, Shadow of Urs or Demigon hands. Um, or if I have my, um, like a Razor in the arsenal, or if I have, you know, a Shadow of Puppetry or something that gives go again in the arsenal, or if I have my Scalers up and my Time Snap in play. Basically, anytime you feel like you have plenty of go again, the plus one attack actually really builds up, especially if you're having to play your yellow demigons and your yellow mm. ghostly flickers because it boosts him from three to four which are super important and obviously choosing plus one on a command and conquer um is important too so sometimes you don't even there's one time i think that i didn't even choose the draw option i just did plus one attack and go again and then play command and conquer i didn't even think that was possible but i yeah I I have to agree with you. If if it's late enough and you've flipped enough stuff, so there's enough in your banish, and you have enough pitch already, because if you uh, if you have some some cheap stuff, it's like two from the command and conquer, with one from the art of war, just the blue pitch, maybe some seeds and maybe some uh, seeds of agony and then the demigons. Yeah. Actually, that's that's nice because I'm gonna show them, bounding demigon and seeds of agony. Uh, after playing your final iteration, I can definitely say that that's rainbow all the way. Yep, they're just too useful. Like, they're the cards that you want to be pitching and getting banished. Like, you almost never want to play them from hand unless it's activating something important. Like, the only way you can play something from your banish zone. Or when you need to have your Nebula Blade on full tilt. You know, otherwise you're always pitching them. And using them um, for in, the, in the late game because setting up your pitch zone in the early game is so important. You want to be pitching those demigons. You want to be pitching those seeds. Ah, oh, that's interesting. And it's more particularly for because uh, I, I haven't even been specific about it. I've been mostly talking about blitz just because skirmish season will be blitz. So I think most people will be looking for. Uh, or looking at this video for, for Blitz information, but would you even yeah. say that um, pitching seats early? Yeah, it applies to both formats for sure. Oh. Um, you almost never want to play your seats from your hand in the early game unless they're, like I said, have an important activation. Um, even if you're just pitching them just to pitch them, for instance, if you have a red seeds and you need two resources, pitch a red seeds and then a blue, and just have the floating or spin them on grasp of the arc knight um because most of the time it's more important to have that card pitched than it is to try to deal one more arcane damage so okay i didn't expect that one yep yeah. and if you need more details i mean we're going to mainly be talking about blitz here but if you want more details on um, constructed chain Check out the Wraith Times. They got a, an article recently by someone that's been putting a lot of effort into doing uh, constructed chain. Yeah, we have some time for shout outs at the end of the video, but uh, good of you to, uh, <laughs> to slide it. <laughs> so just sliding like in the DMs. <laughs> <laughs> slide them in. Um, well, actually, uh, this is the last card of uh, that I wanted to talk about was Faxi Malice, but that's because I'm a huge proponent of it. Absolutely. Um, I personally think running the blue and yellow is really solid. Um, at the very least, definitely run the blue. It's one of the best blues you can run. Because um, yeah. the two arcane damage just is so useful in the deck for activating arcane damage effects and sometimes just being able to kill them when they're at one. And they only have arcane barrier one because almost no one runs arcane barrier one twice or arcane barrier two unless it comes in their normal set. 
which is only really Dash and Azalea. Um, and maybe yeah. Brute with Skullhorn. Yeah, I would just I would just about to say uh, Skullhorn from, from Brute, but that's actually yep. when will that happen, you know? Actually, I, I, right. didn't, I didn't put them in here, but with uh, some cards like Faxing Malice and um, E-Strike, we didn't mention that one, but it's also pretty core, right? Not mm -hmm. running. E-Strike, it's like, it's one of those cards where you can run a budget version, like maybe Tremors of what is ever that Ice Ithendel or whatever you say. It. Yeah, Tremors <laughs> of Unspeakable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's basically the 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 budget version, but E Strike does so much more than what that card can do that it's almost always worth trying to get a pair. Yeah. Like, if if we're going by majestic generics that you need in the in the in the deck, primary is Artivore, followed by E Strike, followed by Command and Conquer. Yeah. Sorry for not putting them on screen, but I'm, I'm kind of guessing that the players that are watching uh, this video actually know the card name Art of War, Command to Conquer, and Enlightened Strike, uh, popular uh, uh, shorthanded to E Strike, um, and I, especially Enlightened Strike, it, it just does it all. But mentioning those cards and faxing, um, did you ever what look at the those shadow cards, Seeping Shadow and Sue Shadow? Yeah, um, I did, and I got really excited when I first saw Spew Shadow. I was like, "Oh man, I hope we get some crazy attack that we can play from the from the Banish Zone that'll make this card worth it." And we never really saw that, unfortunately. Like the best, the best you have is a Spew Command and Conquer against a Light Hero. Like that's the best you have with that card, and it still doesn't feel great. It's mm -hmm. still too expensive. Yeah. Um, like if it gave it go again, or if it cost one less, it would be a very good. It would be a valuable card. It would be see. It would see play. Um, and same with seeping. Like three cost is just too much. Um, yeah. If it was two cost, um, you would at least have a pitch a resource left over to play the card that you're getting out, or something like that. But with three, it's just so resource intensive. Yeah. That's. That was my 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 standpoint as well um but i i didn't try it so i uh, yeah I, I tested the crap out of uh, blue and yellow seeping shadow and just it just expensive. it just always gets stuck yeah well i just have me run through the deck raise reflexes which you always play them um for me personally they're just too valuable um you don't I think anyone who's played enough Flesh and Blood realizes how many times that they've won or lost against an attack reaction. <laughs> um, like Pummel or Razor Reflex. Because sometimes you're just like, yeah, I'll take it. And then boom, you yeah. take three damage and lose the game. <laughs> it's, and it, even it's so flexible because you you have a sword, so it can buff your sword. Um, and you have a sword with a hit effect. So that means you can buff it to get your hit effect off. Yeah. Um, it also is a way to give conditional go again, which is when at the late part of the game when you're barely when all you have left is shackles to try to get, and you're already at six. You're trying to look for as many alternate ways to get go again as you can. Yeah, and because we didn't discuss that as well, but um, the best way to play chain is to shackle each and every turn, right? If even it's your first In turn, blitz, yes, and you yes. slap down just the pot, you still shackle. You still shackle pot. before you slam it. Yeah. Yeah, because I, that is your draw engine. And in Blitz, your your main goal is to get as many extra draws as you can. Because yeah. there's not enough decks that can bring you to fatigue. No, it's that's that's the CC game plan, right? Yep. And for equipment, uh, Galaxy Black as was first always in the deck, but now it's the Nebula. It's it. The, the extra so, resource. Yeah, it's so the deck um, is actually built to be uh, around Nebula Blade. Like you run a bit more resources um, because Nebula Blade is so functionally good in the deck. Um, it's constantly enabled by non attack actions. Um, the four attack is as to your chip damage plan. Um, also, gaining a rune chant as to your... It's, it's almost like meet and greet on a stick. Yeah. Um, you also get to have give a go again with your hero power, which is 
like the ability to get a weapon go again has been so useful like i blew my mind yeah and galaxy black i mean it has its place but i almost would always rather run reaping because then on those turns where you only have one card in hand and nothing in the banner zone you still get to hit for three yeah and not for one yeah now don't get me wrong one usually turns into two if they don't want to block it and it's but, annoying yeah it's annoying but I just never have really found myself to enjoy Galaxy Black over any of the other two. Yeah, yeah, and I, I to be to be honest, I said uh, I saw the first time I saw you list, and then the Nebula Blade was in, and I was like, Psh, bullshit! I need to do some cold, <laughs> cold foil flexing because I I hit it from my box, you know. Yeah. Um. But yeah, I now. Uh, luckily, I also have the cold foil Nebula. <laughs> There you go. I just I've just got mine as a tournament prize, so I'm excited. Yeah, yeah. Oh, congrats with that one. Yeah, I saw. I, I could read the actual excitement from from your from your line <laughs> of text, and it was uh, yeah, it was really cool. Um, any final tips regarding testing and play testing with with friends and stuff? Is it? Don't be afraid to play test against strangers because they'll you quickly become your friends in this community. Um, a lot of us have probably played in the Fab Discord community, and you can just jam games on Tabletop Simulator or Webcam, and there's always someone on there that wants to play and jam games because we're all still in the post-COVID, you know, post-quarantine mindset. <laughs> so most people are down to play. Actually, in, in Europe, we're still quarantining because uh, we were uh, scarce with the purchasing. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah well, it's that's... yeah it's still it's still uh a still pretty partially quarantined in most of the world so yeah anyway uh, I, I i hope that that stuff stays because actually uh i don't know if i would have been uh, this actively involved in the game um just not having the option to to speak with all people all around the world but they actually also having the option to play because now everybody has a webcam and everyone wants to play a game it's so easy to hit up so actually maybe maybe i should more often hit uh, hit the disc to uh, to jam some games yeah it's, it's it's just super important because a lot of people live in rural areas that um you know it's even more important for people in rural areas to have hobbies like this and oh, yeah. um, being able to jam games online without having to travel two to three hours to the closest card shop is super important and it helps the game a lot. Yeah. Yeah. It has been a perfect storm for, uh, for flesh and blood, but they deserve yeah, and it. And I'm so happy for them because yeah. they created such a beautiful game. They deserve it. They, they, they really do. I right, I have shout outs here on my shout outs too. Uh, Hannibal and Tower Nine because these were the guys and some more that you mentioned. Um, yeah, there was a bunch of people in the Roomblade discussion chat um, and in the um, what was it the looking for games that were helping me out um, in the early part of the game, like Tower Number Nine, like you said, Hannibal and things like that have helped me a lot. So yeah. I appreciate them. Yeah, and F you know I know, but I want to sit and be quiet. It's good. One more minute, and we're finally finished. All right. No worries. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Commander Yoshi, that actually uh, won with Iron Rods. That was one. Uh... Yeah, yeah. Commander Yoshi um, was playing in a tournament with only Iron Rods and no um, equip or no cards that were um, majestic or above. And yeah, just, just he did really cool. well. So that was pretty insane. Uh, that's good. Good enough to mention, and you already mentioned uh, your uh, wraith of uh, of uh, time, the raid times uh, part time job that you have, and yeah, yeah, um, Kai B at wraith times and does Fab DB as well. Yeah, um, has been a really great help in doing the article stuff, and it's been a really nice guy. Yeah, so actually, uh, we uh, should definitely uh, give those guys a couple of bucks. So I'll look into having Patreon it uh, and. Uh, <laughs> And actually, yeah, for sure. Ch check out the articles. The pro articles are really well done. <laughs> Especially by this uh, Jokey J guy, right? <laughs> yeah, whoever that guy is, is does a pretty good job. <laughs> well, 
I always want to finish up with uh, be gracious in defeat and humble in victory. This is funny because you mentioned it there earlier as well. And we have a, a local community here in the Netherlands. So if you speak Dutch and you want to play uh, some uh, casual webcam games and learning game, just leave a comment in the YouTube videos. Thank you very yep. much. Thank you so much, guys. Have a great day. Cheers. Bye.